everyone, it's Diane here with my retirement videos. It's been about two months, I'd say, since I recorded um, a video. The last video I think you might have seen is the, uh, the making of the featherweight cover for my sewing machine. Featherweight's upstairs, so you don't see it in action, but it's really a cool pattern. You can get all the details on my featherweight cover um, video. But I just wanted to show it because that was done. Oh, I didn't even put it on my list. I don't know when when I uh, finished it. The, the vi that, um, that project is on my list. The sewing machine cover, and it's checked off, but I didn't date it. Well, how do you like that? Well, what I'm looking at now is um, in January, I put together a Make, make 9 in 2019, and it's June. So there should be at least six items that I've completed. I've completed more than that, I'm happy to say. So I'm going to mix, um, mix the uh, genres of crafts here. Um, if you've seen any of my retirement videos before, you know I do a combination of garment sewing, bag making, um, home deck, quilting, and then I've recently, in the last couple of years now, when I first retired, I started knitting with more purpose. I could always knit and purl, but I never really knit. Never thought I could knit, but now I'm trying to um, improve on that skill and produce garments when possible. So, in January of this year, I participated in what was called a Twin It Up. It was a mystery make-along, knit-along, with the uh, Cozy Up Sisters. I want to see, if, is that their actual name? Their name is Cozy Up Knits is the name of their YouTube channel. And it's for sisters, and they hail from Grand Prairie, Alberta, Canada, and they're just delightful. So that first project this year was a mystery uh, knit along and it was a shawl. It turned out to be a shawl and here it is. I really like it. It was a real fun project. If you would, if you would like to uh, find it, they're on Ravelry. Cozy Up Knits. It's called Twin It Up and you'd be able to make this. It's fun. It's different and it's very nice. So that was one of my first things. Then I know in February, that's this pattern. In February, I knit uh, a knit along with Patty Lyons, and it was the Labadee Cowl. I have that here. Maybe I'll, this is a s smaller item. I'll bring it close up. Um, this was my first venture into color work. And I really enjoyed it. it it's really a real good knit along. If you buy any patterns from um, Patty Lyons, not only do you get the written instruction and pictures, you get a number of very useful videos. I mean, I can read charts now. <laughs> it was it was amazing. Here's some pictures of Patty with the short with the um, cowl on. Isn't it cute? So if you're looking to do some quick color work um, Christmas gifts. It's June. It's time to get started. It's a small item you can keep on your lap and it's fast because you're changing colors. Anyone who has done color work knows that it's fun to do because it's you quickly move along waiting to put in the next color. So um, I would highly recommend the Labadee Cowl by Patty. Patty Lyons. Then in March I belong to a knitting group that meets on Sunday nights and we're, we, a group of us are getting together and we're going to be going to Rhinebeck and so we thought, gee, we should make a sweater. We should all make the same sweater if you want to participate. So we decided, a few of us decided that we were going to make the Carbeth, Carbeth Cardigan by Sarah, oh no, it's Kate, Kate Davies, okay. Give you a better picture of that. I should probably just stay right here with all these items. It's the Carbeth. And here is my Carbeth. No, now I'm going to have to get back. <laughs> I knit mine in uh, yarn from Webs. It's, I used, let me see if I used, I used a uh, bulky, I believe it's a bulky. 
Yes, it was Valley Yon's. It was called Berkshire Bulky. And this is it. This sweater is the warmest sweater I have ever put on. This will be my winter jacket come this winter because if, it, if it's not cold at Rhinebeck, I might not even bring it because it is so warm. Here's the front. There's the back. I highly recommend this pattern too. It was my first sweater. It was a success, probably because it was a bulky yarn and it went quick. So that was my March make it. So, so far, those three were... The sweaters were on my list without a name. So those are done. Those are my... That's, that's most of my knitting. I've made socks. One of our group uh, treated us to a class where she taught us how to do fish, lips, kiss, heel, socks. We did it on a Saturday. It was the greatest, funnest time. It was wonderful. So I made those socks. I've got another pair of socks. I'm not going to show you those because they're just socks. Um, I have one more sweater that I'm working on now. And it is the Andrea, <coughs> excuse me, Andrea Maori uh, Weekender. I'm knitting it from Patton's um, Classic Worsted Weight in the mild gray, the light mild gray color. And there's the color. And it's Patton's Worcester Classic Wool. And I'm happy to say I'm on the last sleeve, and this has been going quickly. I, I have to say, it's been going quickly. I didn't ever uh, land on Sleeve Island because, let's see, this is the front. This is the front. The front and the back look alike. It's um, garter stitch with a slip stitch, knit every other one, center, center seam, like a, a fake seam, a faux seam, if you will. And I have this sleeve done. The sleeve is done in stockinette. The body's garter. But the beauty of this pattern, if you haven't already knit it, is that you knit it wrong side on the wrong side. So you do you do um, stockinette in the round. So it goes again, it goes quickly. You got some ribbing on the shoulder seams. I ended up making the neck a little smaller because I didn't want a, 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 a wide opening at the top a larger boat neck, if this is indeed called a boat neck, I'm not sure. But mine goes from about here to here, which is what I wanted. And I'm this far going, I'm this far along on the sleeve. I'm on the decreases now. For my size, I'm making uh, the large, and I'm decreasing every seven rows, two stitches each on seven rows, till you end up with a, a number of stitches. And then, um, I don't want to give the pattern away, because you'll want to get it. But this one is fun, and this one looks like it's going to be a very wearable, very fun knit. So that's it for my knitting. Um, I have made some... Oops, I've made a number of project bags. And I've got a couple of them here that I can show you. Because I love making bags. That's a, I think that might be one of my favorite things to sew. I made this Alice in Wonderland fabric bag from Cotton and Steel. It's my sweater size bag. It's got a little heavier zipper. Just a short hand. Yeah. Zipper top. So that's my um, sweater size. And then I made a number of smaller size bags that are more like sock bags or shawl bags. You know what? I'm bringing these up closer so that I can show them. And I make the bags, I usually include a um, needle cozy for your double points. So this is the llamas. Are they llamas? I don't know. I think they're llamas. Yeah, they're llamas. And we have a sweater size bag. Again, another cotton and steel. Cotton and steel, I don't line, I don't use these, all these bags are lined and have fusible fleece in them to make them sturdy. But the cotton and steel are a nice uh, sturdy type of fabric and I use a, a duck, a cotton duck on the inside. So it's sturdy enough that you really don't need to um, line it. I mean, I'm sorry, not line it, reinforce it with a fleece. So it keeps it lightweight, can fold up easily. So that's the cotton and steel bumblebees. 
and we have um, some really adorable knitting chickens. How cute is that? With the matching uh, needle cozy on that. We have Harry Potter. Harry Potter needs no needs no further description. It's also got a needle cozy. We have the pastel and charcoal sheep with the needle cozy. Highlight uh, and the contrast fabric is a turquoise. Then the old knitting knitting sheet, black and white. Almost the same fabric, but this is a Knit One Pearl 2 yarn and knitting needles and Knit Pearl. And that's it on the bags. So, the bags, there are still a number of bags around here that are partially constructed. Those are going to be getting done because what I had a couple of big projects I wanted to finish. I finished a quilt. Um, it's That was like a major accomplishment for me. I finished my, I call it the Sophia quilt. The name of the pattern is Quilter's Dessert. And that one I started three years ago when I first started quilting. And it was a block of the month kind of deal. And I made the 12 blocks, but then you had to make 12 more blocks and do the in-between uh, sashings and such. And then there was a big issue with mitering the uh, borders and I was afraid of that but once I did it I just watched a video and did it and of course it's simple so don't be afraid of trying anything so at the end of this video I'm going to put a few excerpts from a, a, another video that I made regarding uh, that quilt so I'll show you a picture of that then um, and this month I finished this butterfly quilt this is an, um, an Adidas Sita pattern um, in which she uses AccuQuilt butterflies and this floral dye to make this quilt. It's, let's see, one, two, three, four by five um, blocks. And the butterflies are all cut from one uh, layer cake of batiks. So if you get a layer cake of batiks, you can really make a colorful blanket. So that's this one. This one's finished. Here's the backing is like a spring floral type of greens and pink. All the colors from the butterfly. Well, not all. I didn't do the blues on the back. Then the yellows and greens and pinks for the backing. So that's that quilt. And this quilt, I'm plan, the plan is to finish this up today. As a matter of fact, I have the binding already made. So the binding's made, the quilt is pieced, and the top is and the, the quilt's been quilted on the long arm. I can show it to you. The butterflies were quilted in a meandering pattern. I, I free motioned and I used a variegated thread, a rainbow color. This I free motioned in um, just kind of like, I don't know what to call it. I kind of sometimes call it a, it's not a, actually floral. It's just, I don't know if you can see, it's quilted in purple. There are some stitches. It's like leaves. Or I like to call them drips. Not if they're visible. Maybe they're more visible on the lilac side. There they are. Just kind of like not. They're not feathers. They're reminiscent of feathers because I haven't conquered the feather yet. So they're reminiscent of feathers. I'm learning feathering. So that's this quilt. This is, uh, this quilt was, um, a challenge with us uh, knit our uh, quilting group. I've, I've recently uh, was lucky enough to become a member of a sit and sew group in Cumberland and once a month on a Sunday we sit all day from about 10 to 4 and we quilt or we sew or we do whatever and one of the members um, said she had some panels and she gave us Whoever wanted to participate in the challenge were able to take the panels and create this quilt from it because she kind of mapped, she mapped out the pattern as well. So I said, sure, I've definitely pro uh, participated and it'll be a charity quilt. So this, was, this will be my contribution for, the, I think we meet next on, in July, 14th I think it is. This is the backing. All purple. <laughs> I kind of like purple. So... That's the other quilt that I'm going to finish today. This is the this is the binding. 
How fun is this? It's just... I used all the colors of the little blocks and put it together. And that'll be my binding for the quilt. And the only other thing I did is I was taking... I took a class. There were some classes offered. And I took a class on, because I love bags, making um, a vinyl pouch. It's a vinyl pouch. It's about 12 by 13 inches size-wise. And this was scraps I had left over from a yoga bag that I had made a few years back. I saved all the scraps. So I had a, enough to have a, like a 15 by 15 inch piece for all this, these people doing the yoga poses. And if you look closely, you can see their yoga phrases like... Uh, lotus pose, tree pose, different poses. And we put in the zip up, we've got the vinyl, so that you can see whatever you've got in this pouch. And the back, we I did um, two and a half inch squares, sew them together, they were 36, two and a half inch squares sewn together, and then instead of stitching in the ditch, we stitched on either side of the seams. This, and then bind it. This, we did this in one night. Well, our fabric was cut. We cut off the fabric before we went, and then one evening we were able to stitch these together, make a sandwich with the front piece, quilt it, make these two little strips, put the zipper in, then put them all together, bind it, and we were done. I want to make more of these for sure. So that's about it. Just wanted to get up to date on what I've been up to. Been up to a lot of things. There's a lot going on. Everyone will tell you once you retire you can become very very busy if you want to and uh, it's just a ball. And it's a ball on a low budget because even though quilting might be considered a very expensive um, hobby, if you play your cards right and do a lot of uh, uh, stash quilting, but, you know, using scraps. You can make some beautiful quilts from scraps. I've got some other quilts going on right now that are scrap quilts. And I'll be showing you those probably next month. So take care, enjoy the rest of June, have a wonderful 4th of July, and I'll see you soon. Bye now. Hey there. Here's my queen size quilt that I started in 2015. Actually, I went to a block of the month from 2015 to 2016 and then kind of put it away for a few years and then took it out and cut out all the alternate blocks and all the um, sashing or the, tr um, the borders and then they were all cut and then put it away because I was afraid to do these miters. I thought this was going to be crazy hard, and it wasn't. They came out pretty good. So that's all I have left from where the machine is, where that, from here to here, and then it's done. Yay. If you got headphones on, turn them down because I'm going to start up the machine. Maybe I should give you a close-up of what I'm doing. Let me see if I can get closer. Well, actually, what I will do is just show you what it looks like, because nobody needs to listen to that loud machine for so long. Let me get in here and show you what I'm doing. I'm just doing free motion. Um, I think they're called drips. I start here and do a drip, and then do another bigger drip. And then, depending on where I did a bigger drip, then it came around here. Well, then here's one where I ended up, I was down here. This one's kind of tripping me up because I used a pearl color glide. Glide thread, pearl, pearl is the color. And when I was in through here, 
and in through here I had a real hard time seeing where I'd already stitched. Note to self, let's have more of a contrast next time. Although I wanted more of the pattern to show up. I'll show you the finished quilt when it's done. Um, anyway, I lost my place a lot of times. I have a lot of light. Let me show you. I have a lot of light in this room. Look at all the lights. I have lights everywhere. I have light, but I brought down a lamp because I thought if I had brighter light, it would be better. I think what needs to happen is if I were down here, I'd have a much better view. So I'm going to raise my um, quilt frame. I thought I was ergonomically correct with it, but I want to be able to see. You should really be able to see where you're going when I, because I quilt. I quilt back, uh, left to right, right to left, up and down, down and up, uh, depending on where I am in the pattern. It's it's more like a doodle, I guess. That's the way I do it. Okay, so I have to do this, and then one UFO is an FO. This has been a long time. Well, it's not really finished. That's the binding fabric on that ironing board over there. I'm going to press that out and, and cut out my binding. This, this baby's getting bound tonight so that it'll be 100% done. I'll show it to you when it's finished. Okay, here it is. Hot off the long arm. It's done! In the words of my grandson, I'm so excited! I am. I'm so excited that this project, well to me I say done. Of course you can see it's not done. You can see all the batting hanging off the edges. But oh, the lighting's bad in here. Should be better. Okay, let's do a close-up so we can see what the quilting looks like. It's kind of like, a, like I said, a mishmash of my own design. And, and the 12 blocks are different. It's a, it was called something dessert. Summer desserts? It's called, I don't know what it's called. I have the instructions right here. It was called Quilter's Dessert. Quilter's Dessert. It was, it's a, it finished at 100 by 100. It's my first queen size quilt. It's really my first quilt I pieced. I did it, you know. 12 blocks over 12 months going to Emma's quilt cupboard in Franklin. A lot of glare, huh? How about this way? Is that better? I don't know if the color's true. It's pink and green and there's a little bit of a red. A lot of beige, a lot of um. And all the quilt box of uh, quilt quilt blocks have names. Like you can see these are spools. And this is a pinwheel. And that's some sort of star, and that must be some sort of star. There's a churn dash in here somewhere. Uh, well, anyway, that's it. Ah, <sighs> and it's only 10 o'clock in the morning. Good, I'll be able to finish this today. There's my. I'm gonna iron this up. Um, the 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 uh, fabric was called Sophia because actually what I did was. Missouri Star Quilt actually had um, a daily deal back then in 2016, I guess. It was called the Sophia Collection. So I got um, the um, the rest of the line in um, five inch squares so I can make some pillow shams because I think I'm going to put this one on my bed. My husband kind of wants it, but I don't know. I didn't make it specifically for him. And it's pink and green, and I don't want to give him pink and green for his room. It's not going to match his wall. His, well, it could match because he only has a border in there, which I could take down. So, very excited. All done. There's my mitered corners that I was so afraid to do. But it turns out fine. Can you see? It's just mitered, and it's such a nice effect. And I was afraid to do it because it was so wide. I had this this, this, and this border all stitched together and then mitered it. But it was fine. It's actually fine. Very psyched. Very happy. Can't wait to finish, finish it. But there it is. It goes forever. It took me like all week to quilt it because 
Um, well, when I first start quilting, I run into problems. You know, tension and thread and, I mean, threading the bobbins. And sometimes I don't do that quite right. And then, of course, I ran out of thread. <laughs> I thought I had plenty. But that's that I don't fault myself for because I didn't know how... Um, how much I would quilt it, how, how, um, what do I want to call it, how, how, thi not thickly, but how densely I would quilt it. I never like them to feel so uh, hard and uncuddly, but, um, this was, I wanted, I wanted, uh, this to show up because, I didn't show you the backing. The backing came from, um, Ryko trim, and it was in there, um, Boggin Hunter's Cove, because I needed nine yards of backing for this, so I wanted to save some money somewhere along the line, because as we all know how expensive this hobby can be. So I had actually pieced it in three places. There's one of my seams right there. You can see it. Because uh, it's 100 by 100, so I did three three-yard pieces, nine yards, stitched them together, and then backed it with this. But I love the match. I think it's so good for um, a fabric that's not part of the original Sophia line. It turned out really nicely. I'm very happy with it. And um, even the binding is going to look good with the backing. Because see that pink? I'm just thrilled. Thrilled to pieces to get an FO done. An UFO done. Well, okay, so that's that on my quilt. Oh, more quilts happening up there. <laughs> That's another uh, quilt block of the month that I'm doing with Emma's Quilt Cupboard for this year. Uh, two, four, six, seven. We're only up to seven, so there's five months to go. And I do have the finishing kit on that already, so I think I'm going to get started on finishing it so I can finish it within the 12-month time frame and not wait three years. And then this was my half-square triangle project that I talked about many months ago. I think that started last summer. I didn't finish it this summer. No, no, no. When did it start? It started last year. Well over a year, I believe. But um, I have all the little pieces combined. Now I'm just putting the uh, blocks together. I've got two rows out of nine. Well, the second row isn't connected. Only the first row is actually stitched, I think. Yeah, the second row doesn't look like it's stitched yet. Part of it might be. No, it's not all stitched. Well, anyway, that's another one I'm working on. Thanks. Okay, that's that. Here's a picture of it in my bedroom, not under such bright lights. I'm hoping that the quilting shows up. It's just a free motion, edge to edge. Made it up as I went along. As I said, it's like drips and then um, drips and echoing. Here's a thread. So there it is.